It's finally here. The sequel that everyone's been waiting for. Well, not really, but we got it anyway. Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 has just hit theaters tonight and I went out and watched it opening night because I really like these independent horror movie creators and I want to support this brand new movie. Even though the first one was kind of hated by critics and fans alike, I still had a fun time with it in theaters. I'm not saying it was a good movie by any sense of the means. I gave it a 3 out of 10, but it was still a fun, enjoyable time to have at the show. This second film brought to us by creators Rise Frank Waterfield and his buddy Scott Chambers, who played Christopher Robin in this film, is the second movie in a brand new universe that we have known as the Twisted Childhood Universe. This will be a universe of movies that takes these childhood classic stories and turns them into these twisted horror movies for us to go and watch and will end up in a culmination of Avengers Endgame type level movie. A lot of people are tired and bored of these movie universes, and I can't lie, I'm one of those people. This one still feels fresh to me. It's because there are these two young adults who are just going at it, making movies and having fun with it, bringing on their friends, bringing on other directors who have no credits to their name, and just having a blast making these movies, and I can't help but love that and support that. And so, I bought my tickets for this film weeks ago because the first one sold out opening night and I w was barely able to get tickets. So I didn't have that high of expectations because I knew what the first one was. I figured this might be a copy paste sequel of that one. But then I'm sitting at work this morning and I get a notification from Twitter of the Rotten Tomato scores of this movie and I couldn't believe my eyes. 100% rated fresh Rotten Tomatoes critic score. This kind of boosted my excitement level a little bit. I mean, I was already excited because, like I said, these movies are a fun time to watch in the theater and to see with a group of people, but they're not great movies. So, I went into this one and here are my thoughts. I think that these two film creators, Rise Frake Waterfield and his buddy Scott Chambers, have a very bright future. I think they are very good as film creators, as directors, as producers, and I think they have a little hit within the horror niche community in this Twisted Childhood universe. They have upcoming movies that they are both directing and just overseeing producing that they've given off to other directors. These movies are Bambi, Peter Pan, Pinocchio, and Pooniverse, which will be a culmination of all these characters in a Avengers Endgame type level movie where all these monsters are fighting all of the heroes from their films. That sounds incredible to me. Uh, like I said, I'm bored and tired out of these universes, these cinematic universes, but this one is fresh and I am excited for it. I sit down for this movie knowing that it is their second go at a movie like this. It has a higher budget and they are more progressed and more into their careers as filmmakers. My first thoughts while watching this is this is 100% a better story from the previous one. The previous one was a cut and paste slasher where these kids are having a party at a cabin in the 100 acre woods and these monsters come out of the woods and start killing them and that's about all you get from the movie. It's a, it feels a bit cheap. It feels a bit wasted. It feels like there wasn't really a story there and they were just trying to have some fun with it, which I have no issue with. I know a lot of people really hated on that movie for what they did. I personally have no issue with kids just trying to have fun making a film. This new one, however, has an actual thought out story from start to finish. The characters actually have character development throughout the movie. You have Christopher Robin who's actually in this movie the entire time and not just in a cold opening and then runs off and we never see him again. You have an introduction of new monsters in Tigger and Owl who I think really add that story and this time instead of Pooh and Piglet feeling like the same character in the original, all of these monsters, all of these Winnie the Pooh characters have their own personality to them and they bring their own little spark to this film. I think the 
change in casting to Scott Chambers as Christopher Robin was a good change. I think he actually did a very good job acting in this movie. I didn't have any issues with his performance, and you'd think in a low-budget horror movie like this, you'd have a lot of issues with the performances, but I thought they were fine. This movie is a lot of fun, and it is a twist on your childhood story. This movie is a lot of fun, and it is a twist on your childhood story. And if I'm taking it in as a perspective of a moviegoer who just wants to go turn off my brain and watch a fun movie, I think this is a good time. If I'm putting it into perspective as a critic and a person who has a YouTube channel who talks about movies, I do have a couple issues with the film here and there. My first issue, and this isn't just my issue with this movie, but with a lot of modern day horror movies, is that I feel like movies use gore just to have gore. There's a few movies that came out in recent history. One that I like to use as a prime example is X by Ty West. That movie has a lot of gore, but it fits into the story. There are like five or six characters in this movie, and there has to be a final girl, so these characters have to go. It is a slasher film. And while there's gore in this movie, it is used in the correct spot and in the right way, and it adds to the film. Other times, and a prime example of this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, where they just put in gore for the sake of having gore, and it kind of takes away from the film, in my opinion. For example, in that movie, in the bus scene, when Leatherface just goes ahead and slashes like 80 people on a bus, there's no need for that. It's just gore because you want to put gore in your movie, and it doesn't add anything to it. There's a scene in this movie, which no spoilers because this is opening night and I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen it yet, that feels like that scene in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 where it's just gore for the sake of having gore. This movie definitely has a better story than that Texas Chainsaw movie and that's why I appreciate it more, but that is one thing I wish that these film creators would hold back on is having gore just to have gore. Calm down on that, focus on the story, and use it in the story. Don't move away from the story to have this carnage candy. Another thing that I have a slight issue with is the way that there's a lot of plot armor for the monsters or the bad guys in this film. There's a lot of plot armor nowadays in action movies. I'll say, even though they're great films, John Wick has too much plot armor where it just seems like no matter what happens, he could fall from an eight-story building and he's okay. Nothing happens to the guy. That's how it feels with the monsters, with Pooh and his friends in this movie. I don't think they can die, which if you have a horror movie and the antagonist can't die and the antagonist can't lose... Where are we going with this? What is it leading to? That's an issue I have. But those are really my only two big nitpicks with this film. Getting more into my positives, uh, I, I, like I said, I think the story is actually a pretty good, solid story. I think Christopher Robin's a really well-used character in this movie, and I think Pooh and his friends are also well-used characters. I like how we flash back to his childhood and we find out new different things about Christopher Robin, like how he has a twin brother and how all these characters kind of mash together. And I know I said no spoilers, so I'm sorry, but I have to get into this right here. If you haven't seen the movie yet, feel free to skip to the end where I show my rating or feel free to click off. But if you're okay with spoilers, hear this out. They have a twist in this story where it turns out that when Christopher Robin was young, his twin brother and a bunch of their friends were abducted from this birthday party by this crazed scientist whose plan is to experiment and test on kids. And it turns out that he's testing with DNA and playing God, they say in the movie, and he's actually testing on these kids to create human-animal mutations out of them. And as you can kind of figure out, that's where Pooh and his friends come from. So you get this whole story where, he, where Christopher Robin's abducted brother is actually Winnie the Pooh in this movie. And a lot of times when you take these classic IPs and you try and do these twists on them, or you just take normal movies, normal fresh ideas, and you try to do these twists on them, it can kind of kill the whole movie. I think in this one, that was a really good twist. I think it worked very well. I think it really adds to this story. And I think the backstory here is used very well. 
They did come on in the beginning of this movie, the two creators, and they uh, explained their ideas for the cinematic universe, and they did say that Blood and Honey 3 is on the way, and I think the setup here is used very well for that next movie and I'm not gonna lie to you I will be seated for that movie and probably for a few others of this universe I think it's a really cool concept and I really like what these kids are doing with it if I have to kind of compare this movie to another modern day horror classic not saying this is a horror classic but compare it to a modern day horror classic I'm going with Terrifier 2 because like how the first Terrifier was just gore and blood and action the whole way through to create a movie on a low budget. Terrifier 2 really expands on the lore of this story and the lore of this universe and gives us a really good movie. I'm not saying Blood and Honey 2 is as good as Terrifier 2, but if I have to compare it to a movie where its sequel is so much better with a bigger budget and a bigger story and a bigger understanding of what's going on, I would compare it to that. For my overall rating for this movie, I gave Blood and Honey a year ago a 3 out of 10, and I think I'm going to have to double that score here and go with a 6 out of 10 for this film. It's a solid movie. I'm not saying it's the best thing ever. I'm not saying it's going to keep that 100% of Rotten Tomatoes, but it is a solid horror film, and I'm all in on this universe, and I'm surprised I'm saying that because I really did not think the first one was all that special. This is a cool movie for me to go watch opening night and to do a review on because that first movie, that first Blood and Honey was my first video to actually get some traction on YouTube and actually get some views. So I'm excited to come back to this franchise and, you know, express more of my thoughts on it. And man, hopefully I can review more of this franchise in the future and bring you more videos because like I said, I'm all in. I'm not saying it's the best thing ever. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. But... I really like what these kids are doing, and I hope that once they're done with this whole Pooniverse, whatever they're calling it, they can move on to something else, an original story of theirs, and put out what I think could be a great movie, because I think these kids have the talent, and I think it's there and ready for them to take. Thank you all so much for watching my review, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for supporting my channel. I am continuing to grow. I'm continuing to make more videos and do things for you and for me as well. So make sure to leave a like on here. Comment below what you think of this film. Subscribe to my channel. All of it helps a lot. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.